This improved version of the fifth generation Seat Ibiza Super Mini offers small car buyers a smarter set of more media savvy talents. It'll need them if it's to distance itself from its Volkswagen and Skoda design stablemates and continue as a credible alternative in this tightly fought segment. Enjoy nearing. It's one of those marketing words, of course, but it's also a rather apt description of what Spanish maker Seat sets out to create when it brings us a small car. Something beautifully engineered with a bit of extra Latin sparkle. Something like this, a much improved version of the Iberian brand's fifth generation Ibiza Super Mini? Perhaps. The Spanish maker's position within the Volkswagen Group meant that this Mark V Ibiza was the first of the VW conglomerate super minis to get the Empire's sophisticated MQB A0 small car platform, something which enables weight savings and the addition of extra electronic features that are borrowed from larger models. In short, it's there to add a bit of sparkle to a small car like this one. Which is appropriate because the Sociedad Española de Automobiles de Turismo, or SEAT as we better know it, is well used to injecting a bit of life into the mainstream market. Its 600 model, uh, launched in 1957, is a fun little runabout that's credited with putting Spain on wheels, over a million being sold to bronze Spaniards in just 11 years. Only when Volkswagen took control of the brand in 1986, though, did its appeal start to spread to the rest of Europe, with the Ibiza consistently the sales spearhead throughout over 30 years of production at the Spanish Martorell plant. Today, it's one of the three models that make up the so-called pillars of the company's lineup, the others being the Leon family hatch and the Leon-based Attica mid-sized SUV. This Ibiza forms the basis for an SUV2, an Arona model that aims to do for Seat in the Duke and Capture crossover sector what the Attica is delivering for the company in the larger Qashqai class. Here though, the Ibiza is our focus, just as it's been Seat since 1984. We've had five generations of Ibiza since then. The original smartly boxy Mark 1 uh, 021A series design, replaced by a 6K series Mark 2 version in 93, before a Mark 3 Type 6L model in 2002, and a Mark 4 6J6P version in 2008. This fifth generation 6F KJ1 series design was first launched in 2017, and all it subsequently needed was a bit of polish applied at the time of this midterm update in late 2021. And that's the car we're going to take a look at here. Say it reckons that with this revised Mark V model, uh, buyers will really notice the extra media options, the smarter interior and the additional safety provision incorporated this time around. Will it all be enough, though, to keep this car current against more recent rivals? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. There's plenty of promise here in its larger Attica and Leo models. Seat has shown us that its cars can deliver class-leading handling if all the right fundamentals are in place, primarily a modern, sophisticated platform, which these days uh, this Ibiza now has. Uh, even if you didn't know that or you didn't care, you might still mark uh, the dynamic differences that this Ibiza delivers over most of its small hatch rivals. Uh, the, the big car feel that so many super mini makers talk about but uh, this one actually delivers. One of the things that you'll notice in this regard is this model's rigid rattle-free road-going demeanor, some of which comes courtesy of torsional stiffness which is made possible by the MQB A0 chassis. That in turn means flat cornering and benefits ride quality. Uh, even more firmly suspended FR variants like this one are comfortable on uneven surfaces and all models handle potholes and tarmac tears with more disdain than you'd expect any Super Mini to exhibit. Uh, well, providing you don't opt for a top FR Sport model with big 18-inch rims anyway. 
We remain slightly less certain about Seat's decision to extend the same big car feel to the steering, which, as a consequence, is still a touch lighter than some really enthusiastic drivers might like. Uh, the helm in a Ford Fiesta is certainly a touch more feelsome, but there's not much in it, and the good news is that you still get enough feedback through your fingertips to keep you really well informed on how well the front tyres are gripping on faster, twistier roads. Go for one of the plusher models, and you also get a drive profile system uh, with sport mode and that firms up the steering as it sharpens the throttle response. Bottom line, um, if you ideally want a super mini with the spaciousness of a Skoda Fabia or a Honda Jazz but you'd also like the sharp handling of a Fiesta and the supple ride of a Volkswagen Polo, uh, you'll get closer to that elusive combination with this Seat than with almost any other class contender that we can think of none of which would be very much use if the engines were to let the side down. Uh, one of them still rather does, the normally aspirated entry-level three-cylinder one-litre MPI petrol unit with 80 PS and a feeble 93 Nm of pulling power, which is predictably sluggish and in which overtaking manoeuvres have to be uh, planned quite strategically. It's best to avoid that option and go instead for the 1 litre TSI turbo three cylinder petrol power plant that we're trying here, the one that the vast majority of potential owners uh, will rightly choose. If your buying budget is plump, you'll want to know that this is available in a top 110 PS guise, which will give you six speed manual transmission or the option of a DSG dual clutch uh, self shifting gearbox. Unless you really need an auto though, we'd suggest you're better off sticking with this TSI unit in the volume 95 PS state of tune that's fitted to this particular car. Uh, yes, the mandatory stick shift only has five ratios, but the engine's torquey, uh, third gear almost cracks 100 miles an hour, uh, so that's not too much of a drawback. Plus, the performance figures, uh, 62 from rest in 10.9 seconds en route to 113 miles an hour, aren't much different to those of the Pokey unit. It's just as well that the manual gearbox is pleasingly light shifting because you'll have to make frequent use of it to keep in the engine sweet spot of just above 2000 RPM. If you do that though, uh, progress can be gratifyingly rapid and there is an emotive three cylinder growl once you climb past the 4000 RPM mark. And that's it for the engine range. Uh, Seat has now deleted the slow-selling 1.5-litre four-cylinder petrol unit and the two 1.6-litre TDI diesels, which were previously offered with this model, uh, which is as it should be. A one-litre petrol engine is all you really need in an Ibiza. Um, Right across the lineup, uh, the surprise is, as we said at the beginning, just how much enjoyment is on offer from this bright, lively little car. All derivatives handled with the big car fluency we referenced earlier on. Uh, they're pretty enjoyable to punt around town too, although we would suggest that parking sensors or the optional reversing camera uh, would be worthwhile investments from the options list. Talking of the options list, uh, SAT's now offering the extra cost option of the Volkswagen Group's travel assist system. It's a setup that's capable of taking over the steering, the braking and the acceleration of this car at speeds starting from 19 miles an hour with a manual gearbox or zero MPH if you specify the DSG Auto. Uh, the travel assist setup then works in either case right up to the car's maximum speed. Uh, that's providing the driver keeps his or her hands on the new capacity steering wheel here which will include a travel assist button to activate the system. To achieve its supporting role the travel assist system relies on two key features a lane assist for lateral guidance and adaptive cruise control for longitudinal guidance. Uh, the adaptive cruise control system incorporates predictive ACC tech which uses the signals from a front-facing camera as well as relevant GPS and map data to slow or speed the car. If your Ibiza has a sat-nav and DSG auto transmission fitted, the predictive ACC system is even cleverer. It works together with the gearbox and the navigation system to proactively take into account uh, local speed limit information, town boundary signs, uh, junctions and roundabouts. It's all indicative of the way that this fifth generation of Beta has moved on technologically, but we can't help thinking that less is more here. Uh, this remains a car that you don't need to spend a fortune on to have fun.
There aren't many exterior changes to the revised version of this Mark V model, but you might spot the now standard LED headlights and the revised alloy wheel designs. It's still a five door only design with short front and rear overhangs and the wheels pushed right out to the corners of the car. Under the skin, as before, this car is based on the Volkswagen Group's MQB A0 platform, and that's shared with the Volkswagen Polo, the Skoda Fabia, and the Audi A1 Sportback. Here at the front, the clean lines and the crisp edging gives a real sense of tension to a shape that's recognizably Seat styled and which incorporates a particular emphasis on triangles in areas like the door mirrors and the headlights. Uh, apparently, the idea here is to suggest motion and direction. Uh, more of that comes as part of the frontal design's X-shaped motif, uh, the bottom part of which is shaped by the outer framing of this lower air intake. Uh, that flows into a front grille that's given extra prominence by two character lines, and they flow down the bonnet to emphasize the Seat logo. And in profile, well, Seat was always keen that this Mark V Ibiza should have a different, sportier profile than the other Volkswagen Group Super Mini models that are built on the same platform. And to that end, they lobbied for extra investment in order to move this windscreen pillar uh, 90 millimeters backwards to enhance the stance. Seat regulars who glance further back along this fifth generation model's five-door body shape will note that the odd, almost arbitrarily angled coachwork slashes of the pre-2017 era Mark IV model have been replaced by these two more mature, considered horizontal creases just below the glass line. One flows from the front wing to the middle of the rear door, while the other begins just ahead of the rear door handle and then flows back towards the rear light cluster. Uh, there is also a lower rising swage line just above the sills, and that connects wheel arches that can house this updated model's restyled alloy rims of either 15, 16, 17, or even 18 inches in size. We've got the 17 inch brilliant silver rims here. There are a couple of fresh colors too, sapphire blue and asphalt blue. At the rear, the main difference is light in the badge work. Uh, the model name is now in embossed handwritten lettering and the Seat logo is finished in two-tone chrome. Uh, otherwise, though, things are as they were and that means that the uh, triangular theme continues here, primarily with the distinctive nighttime signature, which is delivered by these LED tail light clusters. They're standard, providing you avoid the two entry-level trim options. Uh, from this perspective, uh, you might also appreciate this Ibiza's relatively low slung stance. Uh, you've got 12 millimeters less roof height here than you'd have in, say, a rival Skoda Fabia, and that makes all the difference when it comes to uh, visually distancing this Seat from some of its boxily boring rivals. Time to take a seat up front, which is an area of this updated model into which a huge amount of design budget was poured. A wise choice on the Spanish brand's part. We're used to mid-term updates consisting mainly of trim embellishments, but this one's remarkably far-reaching. Gone is the bland angular dashboard we disliked in the original version of this fifth generation model. In its place is a completely redesigned and much nicer fascia with soft touch surfaces, more interesting textures and a rather smart mock aluminium trim panel. It's all a big step forward to the point where this could be the cabin of a premium brand model where it not kept in its place in the Volkswagen hierarchy by a few remaining hard surfaces where you might hope for softer ones on the door tops, for example. Even these, though, are quite nicely finished. And there's more. The leather-covered steering wheel has been redesigned. So have the air vents, which now, in a trendy touch, light up at night in colors that depend on your choice of trim. Honey for SE models, Daring Red for this FR variant, and Burgundy for the top excellence model. Possibly the very first thing you'll notice, though, is the all-new central infotainment screen, which is less visually integrated into the dash than before, but much more in your eye line. More importantly, it's about 20% bigger than before. The feeble 5 and 8-inch monitors of the original version of this Mark V design have been replaced by 8.25-inch, and as here, 9.2-inch screens, the latter standard above base trim. 
Because it's been installed slightly proud of the dash, the screen's easier to use. Your hand can rest on the top or on this trim strip just below so you can be steadier as you jab. This screen's much cleverer too. For a start, the standard full-link smartphone integration with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is now wireless, so there'll be no more unsightly wires hanging about the dash. Uh, there's also now online connectivity with an embedded eSIM, which means the Ibiza will never lose its connection to the digital world. This also brings other benefits, like the option of online radio and access to cloud-based real-time traffic information that can be used to reroute the navigation system. Uh, that's standard two above entry-level trim. There's a much improved natural voice recognition system too, and that's activated with the command hola hola. Anything this monitor can't tell you will probably be covered off by the usual further small screen you get between the main gauges in the instrument binnacle with its neat carousel style graphics. With the priciest FR Sport and Excellence Lux models, these analog dials are replaced by a digital cockpit driver binnacle screen which lifts the Ibiza's interior into the digital age. Whatever your choice of trim, you'll find the seating position is fairly low slung by super mini standards. That's in keeping with this set's sporty pretensions, but getting comfortable is easy thanks to a good range of adjustment from the seat and from the smart three-spoke multifunction wheel. Uh, the seat offers decent under thigh support, but it lacks the optional lumbar adjustment, which is available on a rival Ford Fiesta to minimize aches and pains on longer trips. All-round visibility and rearward visibility is excellent, which is just as well because parking sensors only come as standard on top-spec trim, and we haven't got them here. What else? Well, Set says all the controls and instruments have been set as high as possible, although that directive appears to be ignored in terms of the lowly sighting of these ventilation dials in front of the gear stick. And build quality? Well, driven by exacting Volkswagen Group standards, that's always been a decent Seat strength. Of nearly 6 million Ibiza so far produced since 84, the brand claims that well over 3 million are still on the road. This car is screwed together in a way that should continue that showing. Uh, the switches and stalks feel reassuringly solid, which is why this model's Spanish Martorell production line was also chosen to assemble the second generation version of Audi's considerably pricier A1 model. Moving to practicalities, there's most of what you'd expect. Uh, the door pockets and the glove box are both reasonably sized and a small storage area at the bottom of the centre stack gives you somewhere to stash your phone or your keys and includes twin USB ports and an aux in point. Twin cup holders and a coin tray sit alongside the thankfully conventional handbrake with a further cubby just behind. We like the little touches too, like the way that the air care filter in the ventilation system removes all allergens to create and maintain a clean air environment. Plusher models can have big car features like micro suede seat trim, adjustable mood lighting and sex, Kessie keyless entry and start system too. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now, despite the fact that this fifth generation model is actually two millimeters shorter than the 2017 era model, access is quite acceptable by super mini standards. And once inside, the benefits of this fifth generation design's extra body width and longer wheelbase will be immediately obvious, not only to owners of the old Mark IV Ibiza, but also, we'd argue, to those familiar with most other rival products in the Super Mini segment. It's certainly impressive that in a car measuring only a fraction of four metres, uh, it can allow a six-foot adult to sit comfortably behind a driver or front seat passenger of similar size. Try doing that in a Fiesta. This is all down to the extra 35 mils of legroom allowed by the car's MQB AO platform. There's also decent headroom. The additional width that was built into this fifth generation design also makes a big difference. The feel back here being almost more like that of a Focus class family hatch than a Super Mini. It means that in an Ibiza, the carriage of three rear seated adults is a sensible possibility for short distances, although the middle person's comfort will be severely compromised by this prominent central transmission tunnel. The more likely scenario of needing to transport a trio of kids is easily dealt with, although storage space for their associated paraphernalia will be at a premium, something Seat could have done something about had not its bean counters that rather meanly vetoed the provision of seat back pockets. It seems a bit 70s to make rear passengers wind up their own rear windows on most models too. 
Finally, let's take a look at luggage space out back. Now, remember we were talking about a focus class feel on the back seat. Well, that's even more evident back here. Uh, press in the large Seat logo that uh, doubles as a boot release and the rear hatch opens to reveal 355 litres of luggage space. To give you some perspective on that, a current Ford Focus in the next class up can only beat that figure if you do without a spare wheel. The current Fiesta has only 311 litres. It's all worth remembering the next time that someone tells you that most super minis are much the same. In everyday use, we found that the additional capacity makes the difference between struggling with, say, a couple of big suitcases and a small buggy, or fitting them in quite easily. Uh, not that everything's perfect back here. Uh, it is annoying, for example, that you can't have a dual-height boot floor. And as with most Super Minis, there's no space saver spare wheel back here unless you pay extra. And that's something that we consistently disapprove of. Although at least the fiddly little tyre repair kit that you get instead should free up some extra space under the floor. If you need more room, you can of course uh, push forward the rear bench. It's now split folding across the range, but it doesn't fall quite flat. Once retracted, up to 823 litres of space is revealed. Sayat claims that Ibiza customers are, on average, around 10 years younger than those for models from rival brands. So it's important that this car remains affordable, or at least relatively affordable. There is a bit of a question mark with that. Uh, when we first tested this fifth generation model back in 2017, its starting price was around £13,000. At the time of this test, in spring 2022 though, the sticker figures for this car were kicking off from just under 18,000 and ranging up to around 23,000. Yes, this updated model is better, but is it really that much better? You decide. What customers of this fifth generation of Ibiza have had to get used to since 2017 is a lack of body style choice. It's this five door hatch or nothing. The brand points out that few customers want a three door super mini these days and that those who had previously have chosen the estate variant in the previous generation range are now covered off by the Ibiza based Arona small SUV. The same lack of choice pervades when it comes to the engines on offer. It's a three-cylinder, one-litre petrol power plant or nothing. Uh, assuming that is what you want, we'll need to start by pointing out that there is quite a gap in technology between the entry-level ATPS MPI unit and the 95PS TSI power plant we're trying here. Enough, we'd say, to justify the pokier and more efficient TSI's £530 price premium. Affordable MPI and TSI derivatives come only with five-speed manual transmission, but if you're prepared to spend over £20,000 on an Ibiza variant with the sportier FR trim we have here, uh, then you'll have more options. At this level, the one-litre TSI engine comes not only in this 95 PS guise, but also in an uprated 110 PS state of tune. Uh, the extra £415, which is necessary to provide that more eager unit, also gets you a six-speed manual gearbox and the further option of DSG auto transmission if you want that. Uh, that is another £1,120. Sadly, there are now no more powerful engine options beyond that, so no longer the option of an Ibiza in hot hatch Cupra form, uh, the sort of thing that we saw with previous generation models. With this updated version of this fifth generation design, there are actually six levels of trim. Uh, they start with SE and then SE Technology. Uh, if you would like your Ibiza with a more dynamic look though, uh, then you'll choose either this FR variant or possibly FR Sport. If luxury is more of our priority, then you'll go instead for either Excellence or Excellence Lux. Onto the value proposition offered across the range. Uh, now in looking at competitors, the obvious place to start is with the three other VW Group Super Minis which share all the same engineering as this one. Uh, those are Volkswagen's Polo, Skoda's Fabia and the Audi A1 Sportback. Well, the Skoda costs about the same as a comparable Ibiza while equivalent versions of the Polo and the A1 cost around a thousand pounds more. 
What about the super mini segment market sales leaders, Ford's Fiesta and Vauxhall's Corsa? Well, an equivalent Fiesta 1-litre EcoBoost costs around the same as a comparable Ibiza. A Corsa 1.2-litre turbo will set you back about £500 more. Looking at some other segment options, the Mazda 2 and the Mini 5-door are comparably priced against the Seat. An equivalent Renault Clio, though, will cost you about £1,000 more. Bigger savings than that are available elsewhere. Uh, for example, if you're looking at a base Ibiza SE, 1 litre MPI 80 PS model, the Citroen C3 and the Suzuki Swift can both be had with similar engines at savings of around £3,000. With an MG3, the saving will be over 4000 But with big savings come big compromises in terms of technology and equipment, which you'll really feel with the three models I just mentioned. It is also worth pointing out that some popular segment choices will actually cost you quite a lot more than an Ibiza. The avant-garde Peugeot 208, for example, is around £2,000 more. And of course, you'll pay more for the uh, two full hybrid-only models in the segment, Honda's Jazz and Toyota's Yaris, which both cost from around £20,000. If, having considered all this, you conclude it is this Seat that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Spanish brand has been when it comes to standard specification. Well, let's see. Seat has now deleted the previous poverty level of spec, S, so things kick off instead with SE trim. This features Eco LED automatic headlamps with LED daytime running lights, plus 16 inch Enjoy design brilliant silver alloy wheels, metallic paint, front fog lamps, a chrome frame front grille, and body color for the door handles and mirrors, along with LED technology for the daytime running lights, uh, powered mirrors, and a decent level of camera safety kit, which we'll cover off in just a few moments. Inside with SE trim, leather features on the steering wheel, the gear stick and handbrake. You get air conditioning, cruise control, a height adjustable driver's seat, an auto dimming rear view mirror, a trip computer, illuminated honey colored air vent surrounds and a split folding rear bench. Uh, infotainment, that's taken care of by an 8.25 inch central screen. Uh, this offers wireless full link smartphone integration with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality plus Bluetooth audio streaming, a USB port, and steering wheel mounted controls, which allow you to operate the four-speaker DAB audio system. In addition, all the beaters get use of this Spanish brand's clever, freely downloadable Seat Connect app. With remote access, a year's use of which comes with the car, this allows you to remotely lock or unlock your Ibiza from wherever you are. Uh, if you've forgotten where you've parked it, it will give you area notification. And if having got that, you still can't find your car in a crowded car park, then the Connect app will allow you to remotely activate either the alarm, the headlights or the horn. It'll also give you a vehicle health report. It'll help you to schedule servicing and it'll give you various elements of extra driving data. Avoid entry level SE trim and across the rest of the range, the Seat Connect app also gives you online map updates, uh, online traffic information, online route calculation, and a year's subscription to the brand's online infotainment system too, which allows you to use online radio. Uh, plus, in this form, the app can also give you info on local parking spaces and fuel stations. Right, having covered everything you get with base SE trim, let's go on to take a look at the spec levels across the rest of the lineup. Uh, the first step further up the range comes with the SE technology grade, which basically is the same as SE, but with larger 16 inch design machined alloy wheels in rather grim sounding nuclear gray. And more importantly, the larger 9.2 inch central dash screen. That screen update is important because it means you also get navigation with a 3D map display, plus voice control activated by the command Ola Ola. Beyond SE technology trim, uh, you have two directions you can go in, sportiness, which is emphasized by the FR model we have here, or luxury, and that's epitomized by the top excellence trim levels. In both cases, you get full LED headlamps, dark tinted rear windows, LED tail lights, uh, power folding mirrors, rain sensing wipers, and an alarm. 
Ibiza FR models get a slightly more dynamic look and feel thanks to smart 17-inch brilliant silver alloy wheels, twin exhaust pipes, a rear spoiler and sports styling for the rear bumper. Plus you get sports suspension and the Seat driver profile driving mode system. Inside with FR models you get sports seats, a black headliner, illuminated red air vent surrounds and a flat bottom steering wheel which on DSG auto models has gear shift paddles. Uh, you can go even further too with an FR sport model uh, that adds micro suede upholstery, larger 18 inch performance alloy wheels and say it's digital cockpit uh, screen which replaces the instrument binnacle's conventional analog dials. If you're prioritizing comfort, your dealer will steer you instead towards one of the Excellence trim levels. Excellence spec gets you 17-inch dynamic design alloy wheels, Kessie keyless entry, uh, dual zone climate control, rear parking sensors, micro suede upholstery, air vent surrounds which illuminate in a burgundy color, a front center armrest, interior ambient lighting and electric rear windows. If you want to go further, Excellence Lux spec adds to that with adaptive cruise control, uh, front parking sensors, a rear view camera, the SAT driver profile driving mode system and the digital cockpit instrument binnacle screen that we just mentioned. When it comes to options across the range, SAT has been pretty restrained in terms of what's on offer. Uh, with the two base SE trims, uh, you have to do without an alarm, so you'll certainly want to add that. Unless you opt for one of the excellent spec models, uh, then you'll have to do without rear parking sensors too, so budget for those as well. And across the range, SAT makes you pay extra for a space saver spare wheel. Uh, for some reason, that spare comes included if, across the range, you pay more for SAT's Beats sound system upgrade. You can add a panoramic sunroof too, and if you don't like the uh, different coloured air vents, then you can replace those with grey ones and no extra cost. On to safety. Now, when this fifth generation model was first introduced in 2017, we commented that a big step forward in safety provision had been made, and this car still looks pretty competitive in this regard. All models get front assist autonomous braking. That's one of those camera driven systems which at urban speeds scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential accident hazards. If one's detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied and that'll decrease the severity of any resulting accident. In addition, there's lane assist, which alerts you if you drift over lane delineation markings, a tardiness recognition system, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. It'll recognize uh, by prompting you to stop for restorative coffee and a clever multi-collision braking system, which automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if, say, someone hits you, and understandably, you go to pieces, your Ibiza will automatically sort itself out. Uh, there's all the passive stuff too, of course. Twin front side and curtain airbags, uh, ice fix child seat fastenings, active anti-whiplash front head restraints, tire pressure monitoring, hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and the usual electronic systems for traction and stability control. Plus, there's an ABS braking system which flashes the brake lights to warn following motorists if you're making an emergency stop. All of this delivered the SEAT a strong result in Euro NCAP safety testing with a stand-up performance in adult occupant protection, 95%. There was a 77% showing in child occupant protection and a 76% result when it came to pedestrian safety. If you want more in terms of safety, you can pay another £240 for the safety and driving pack, which is only available with the TSI engines. This gives you three key features. Adaptive cruise control, which automatically controls your distance to the vehicle in front on the highway. High beam assist, which uh, automatically dips your headlight beams for you at night. And also dynamic road sign display, and that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. 
With top FR Sport and Excellence Lux models, you can also get a version of the same pack with a degree of VW Group Travel Assist Autonomous Driving Capability built in. And that's courtesy of a lane keeping system with Traffic Jam Assist. Uh, using this, your Ibiza will be able to keep itself in lane and steer and accelerate for you in low speed traffic jams. Uh, Seat has also developed a side assist system for this car and that's basically a blind spot monitor. This adds an extra layer of protection when you're changing lanes on the motorway. Front and rear facing radars monitor the vehicle's blind spots for up to 70 meters and they will alert the driver if another vehicle's detected. There are many advantages to this Mark V Ibiza's lighter, stiffer MQB A0 platform and when it comes to issues of running cost efficiency, this advanced chassis continues to make quite a difference. Not enough of a difference though, it must be said to completely offset the weight penalty that comes with this fifth generation design's tougher structure, higher quality fittings and extra safety equipment. Uh, we remarked when we first tested the current model in its one litre TSI form that it wasn't quite as efficient as the previous generation design with the same engine and that is still true. Today's Ibiza 95 PS 1 litre TSI variant, uh, the one we have here, delivers up to 54.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 118 grams per kilometre of CO2. The 110 PS 1 litre TSI variant manages up to 52.3 mpg and up to 123 grams per kilometre or bests of 48.7 mpg and 132 grams per kilometre in DSG auto form. Overall, across the range, it all adds up to a pretty class competitive showing, aided by the fact that this Spanish Super Mini remains relatively light, still weighing in at just over a tonne. If you do prioritise low running costs in this class of car, then it's certainly to the three-cylinder, one-litre TSI turbo engine that we direct you. This unit provides most of the frugal running cost returns and the willing performance that you'd previously have expected from the Ibiza range's old 1.6-litre diesel option, but without that TDI power plant's high upfront cost premium and more expensive fuel prices. The reason why is that the TSI engine features efficient variable camshaft adjustment and particularly optimizes thermal management which significantly reduces emissions in the warm-up phase. As a result, it's as economic as the cheaper, normally aspirated 80 PS MPI variant, uh, a unit that manages bests of 53.3 MPG and 119 grams per kilometer of CO2. With either an MPI or a Turbo TSI 1 litre Ibiza, your first year tax disc will cost you £190 and you'll have a benefit in kind tax rate of between 28 and 30% depending on the trim level you've chosen. Seat has achieved this standard of efficiency by including all the usual efficiency tools at the disposal of modern automakers, things like brake energy regeneration and the start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're sitting in traffic or waiting at the lights. If you have a variant fitted with the optional drive profile system, uh, you'll have an eco mode which will focus all the car systems towards more efficient operation. And across the range, there's a gear shift indicator on the dash, and that enables uh, ordinary owners to get somewhere near the quoted returns on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Likely Ibiza owners will of course be concerned about more than just fuel economy and taxation oriented CO2 returns. They're going to want to keep their maintenance costs down for example, something of a challenge with this car given that service intervals are reasonably frequent every 10,000 miles. The fixed price packages that your dealer can offer you should help with this, uh, providing either one or two years of cover for as little as £15 a month. Uh, we should also mention that residual values are pretty reasonable by class standards. Expect 38 to 40% of your purchase price back after the industry standard uh, three-year 60,000 mile operating period. What else? Uh, well, there's Seat's usual three-year 60,000 mile warranty. That's unexceptional when rivals like Hyundai offer five years of coverage standard, uh, Kia offers up to seven years, and Toyota up to 10. However, the Seat deal is extendable, so you might be able to negotiate on that. It also includes two years of Europe-wide roadside assistance. 
Finally, let's talk about insurance. The base one litre ATPS MPI unit is rated at either 3E or 4E, and the 95 PS one litre turbo TSI engine that we've been recommended, that's rated at either uh, group 9E or 11E. The top 1 litre TSI 110 PS model, that's pitched at Group 13E. Ibiza is important to Spain, and this one certainly is to Seat. Nearly 6 million examples of this car have been sold since its original first introduction uh, back in 1984. Place all of those end to end and you'd have a line stretching from this model's Martorell Spanish production plant to Auckland in New Zealand. This car is in short something of an Iberian success story. And it's one that looks set to continue for some time yet. Uh, the main thing the original version of this fifth generation model needed was a more appealing cabin and maybe a bit of a connectivity update. With both those things now in place, with this updated Mark V Ibiza, it's become a super mini you simply can't ignore. Unlike many other affordable small cars of this kind, it's fun to drive. And unlike other fun to drive contenders in the class, it's relatively spacious inside. Plus, this car is safe, comfortable, and now well-connected too. Other issues? Well, it's hard to find too many. Uh, as we have suggested, there are cheaper contenders in the class, so if you don't care about handling dynamics, you might be tempted to look elsewhere for that reason. If, on the other hand, you do like your driving and you come to this car from a rival Fiesta, then you might notice that the steering of this Seat lacks just a touch of the involving feel that marks out that impressive Ford. But to be honest, there's not much in it. Otherwise, there's lots to like. Uh, the attributes that we've already mentioned, further built on by sharp styling and the low running costs which are possible from the frugal one litre engines. In summary, we're looking here at a car that, like its brand, has matured nicely. One mindful of the fact that modern day Spaniards have to balance Latin spirit with sober sense. In this Ibiza, they have a small car that does exactly that. <laughs>